my parents. My parents saw what was happening in the area around me and they sent me to a school one and a half hours away. <laughs> so imagine, just to get an education, I'm traveling 30 miles a day. First, I thought that was okay. I like an adventure. And even though this was an unknown unknown, I felt like there was no world that I couldn't enter. Now, Queen Elizabeth Boys Grammar School Barnet was not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> Which I realized pretty much the day that I started, but they sent kids to Oxford and Cambridge to write it. <laughs> to start with, you can't just go to QE. There's a reason I'm coming all the way from Northwest 10. They had to accept you. And to do that, they man that assessed you. Now let me explain what assess meant. Verbal reasoning, non-verbal reasoning, English and maths testing. Imagine that, 10 years old, working your ass off just to make it out of St. Raps, Bridget. My parents obviously wanted me to go to QE, but I wasn't ready for the competition. I couldn't even do long addition. But there's nothing more unstoppable than a mum on a mission. She taught me herself. 6 a.m. every morning for a year straight. These times my big brother had just begun year eight and my parents were slowly learning how low the education's expectation of their children was and that didn't reflect the values they instilled in us. So, boom, I've done the assessment. Then I got a letter of rejection. Secretly, I was relieved. I still loved the ends, I wasn't trying to leave. And even though my friend's older brother died in beef, I believed we could make it despite the grief. Now, a couple of weeks later, came a second letter. Turns out I was on the waiting list. Now they're offering me a place, I'm pissed. What am I supposed to say to this? Listen, listen, if you come from St. Ralph's and you make it to Queen Elizabeth Boys, you're going there, it isn't a choice. <laughs> my parents weren't prepared to listen to noise about how I want to stay in school in the bits with my boys. And deep down, I worked hard for that entrance exam because I knew what it meant to the fam. I didn't want to leave Northwest for my plan to stay. But that school made me the man I am today. And I hated it. The uniform, the strictness, the distance from my friends. Everything about the school was different from the ends. I mean, Queen, Elizabeth, boys. It does what it says on the tin. From the first term, I refused to settle my skin. I did everything I could to get kicked out. I messed about, rejected their whole ideology. Two middle fingers up, that was my philosophy. Because obviously I'm coming from the ends, Freddie smacked below, and I just wanted to go back there now. I'm acting out. Back home, kids got expelled all the time, so I thought sooner or later they're gonna draw the line. But you know what? They never did. They could turn your life into a living hell. Never turn their back on a kid. I began understanding their dedication. I can't lie, I was inspired by the standard of education. Everyone in the school was damn near genius. Teachers included, man, they man, they're serious. I realized the ends was just my comfort zone. But what's comfort though? I'm here because I actually want to grow. And I'm lucky enough to be in a school where being a fool isn't seen as cool. My daily journey was symbolic in itself. I'd physically watch my environment change. Every morning I left the ends for the suburbs with mansions where everyone was driving a range. At 11 years old, I wasn't finding this strange. To be honest with you, I was amazed. I would just gaze out the window, taking it all in. Every morning, imagining having a life in this space. One day, I think it was a Wednesday or a Thursday. It's definitely in January, I remember, because it was near my birthday. I was in religious studies, in deep thought as usual, and Miss Golding told us to write down how we wanted to be described at our funeral. Bit heavy for 11-year-olds. <laughs> but to be honest with you, that's my kind of lesson, because that's my kind of question. So once again, I'm projecting my life picturing all my potential moves. And I wrote that I want to be remembered as an entertainer with influential views. Children 
know things. I'm the proof. There's a certain clarity that comes with youth. Because deep down, young people, all people, just want the truth. Anyway, while I'm making progress in school back home, things were moving in the opposite direction. Northwest London's a big place, but there always seemed to be problems in my section. Skengs were firing, people in the ends were dying, tensions were intensifying. Five days a week I had to change the way I speak. And on the weekend I'm catching up with the slang. See, my neighborhood's peak. I'll be made to look weak if I'm labeled the geek. And I wanted to hang, but I noticed the estate kids that I used to play with slowly becoming a gang. The gang movement came with very different energies. And inevitably it came with enemies. My neighbors started calling themselves Tugs of Rafs, as in Thugs of St. Raphael's estate. This would eventually bring me problems, which not a lot of local young black males escaped. Rafs had issues with neighboring estates, man from Stonebridge and man from MP. I always found this ironic because I would have represented both if I ran for MP. Now earlier, I mentioned an estate called Mitchell Brook. We were cool with man from MB. There's one right there. <laughs> but my point is, our most lethal conflicts happened within a one mile radius. We grew up just knowing that's the way it is. Suddenly, everybody had an alias. Listen, when your social world is that dangerous, you want to be the baddest and the bravest and the craziest. Not all relationships capsized. Outside that one mile radius, the ends had ties. Part of it's my enemy's enemy is my friend, but it's also one community. You can see the other side in church when your niece is getting baptized. Long story short, people had allies. Past Stonebridge, there were other estates we used to chill in as children, closer to Wilsdon. In fact, we used to ride our bikes there, do you know what I'm saying, with our friends from Bridge. Before the situation got so sensitive, the ends was lich. Saturday morning, we do the housework empty the contents of the fridge and ride our bikes to the other side back when the blocks were still standing just to knock for our little man there. Imagine, without fear, without doubt, standing in the doorway like, hello Rosby's mum, is, is Rosby allowed out? <laughs> that was guard in the court. We used to call it G-block, that was part of the talk. Gemma and her sisters used to live in Cowan Court. Racing was everyone's favourite childhood sport. Eventually, we ventured outside of Southside, down past Bruce Wood Road, down to Talbot Walk. We used to spin around around the courts, past the blocks that were boarded up, playing knock down ginger whenever a door was shut. I can't be the only one remembering all this stuff. Before the war was love. I saw it, bruv. I saw it. Thank you for listening to my story. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, love. Thank you. Mm.